you this morning, O oh Lord. We bring the study from your throne. Come and teach us your word. The Bible said the entrance of your word bring it light. Let the light in the world light our path this morning in Jesus' name. That we'll be the hearer and the doer of your word this morning. We don't just be the hearer, but the doer of this word. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said, Learn and show yourself approved. We pray this morning, Holy Spirit, come and teach us. That we learn and use me to speak. And use me to teach your people to the glory of your name. And at the end, your name alone will be hallowed be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. If you have the manual, our lesson is on lesson four and it's page 15. Last week, we studied assurance of salvation. Before I go, I want to ask a few questions, like in summary of what we learned last week. Assurance of salvation. So one of the things we said that, is, that assure us that we are saved is not by our work, but by what? Praise the Lord. By his grace and by what? By his mercy. Last week, we learned that your assurance, what assure you that you are saved, is by the word of God. Because God has said it, and it must come to pass. That is your assurance. You are sure that you are saved by the word of God, because the word of God has said it. Then two, we said your spirit bear witness that you are saved. And if you are saved, if, that we should not be worrying as a Christian, worrying yourself over whether I'm saved or not. That your spirit that you have in you bears witness that you are what? A child of God. And also that is only God that is written in his word that we are what? Saved through him, through Christ Jesus. So if you give your life to Christ, you are saved. And once you are saved, if you don't return back to sin, you are saved. But if you, re if you return back to sin, are you not crucified Christ again? I pray that will not be our portion. You, you will not be saved. So last week we learned about it, the assurance of, um, of salvation, that we should, we should not live in our life every day worrying whether we are saved or not, because we are saved in him. That, and it's written in his words, in Romans 10, 9 to 10, and if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him up from the dead, Thou shalt be what? Saved. So you should know that. Then on that thing again, we need to learn that. Last week also we learned that your activity on the earth will not save you. So no matter how good you are, no matter how worthy you are, and you are doing things for other people, you are doing other things for other people, if you don't accept Christ Jesus, you will not be saved. Those activities you are doing, you might receive the benefit on earth here, yeah? But the kingdom, you will not enter the kingdom. So as a Christian, you should know that what you are doing here, you are serving, serving, serving God here. It's very important, but that will not take you to heaven. You must give your life to Christ. If you don't accept Christ, all the activity you are doing in the church, you are doing at all, all the good work you are doing, they will be in vain. And we pray they will not be in vain in Jesus' name. So the difference is that if you do this activity, there are rewards, there are crowns for you. You are civil, but when you get to the kingdom, you will be rewarded. Praise the Lord. That's what we learned last week, that even you are saved, but you are doing this activity, there are what? There are great rewards that God will reward you when you get into the kingdom. Because in the kingdom of God, there are different what rewards. I think we learned that before too. So, but today, because of time, we'll be rushing to sanctification, lesson four. If you are there, sanctification. When we say sanctification, what do we mean? So, we'll be having two outlines today, the stage of sanctification, the meaning and benefit of sanctification. Praise the Lord. So, before we go, let's take our memory verse from... 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. That is our memory verse. 1 
Thessalonians 5, verse 23. Can we read it together here and there? 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 said, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the word, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we take it again? Praise the Lord. You said this memory verse summarize everything that have to do with sanctification. He said, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, I pray God, your whole spirit and what? Your soul and body. Three, one. Your spirit, your soul, and what? Body. Be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse what? 23. Our Bible reading is in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. Because of time, we will open to that place and we will read it together. We will read it. Then we have introduction. Say, sanctification means, simply means to make holy. What, what does it mean to make what? To sanctify. Is to what? Make holy. To make what? Pure. Separated unto God. To make what? Holy. To make what? To make pure. And separated unto what? God. To make what? Holy. To so make what? Your body holy, your soul holy, your spirit holy, and separate unto God. Not just your body. Praise the Lord. That is why some people, they get it wrong. They feel they are spiritual because they can, they wash their body, wash their physical body, and they feel because of that, they are what? Spiritual. No. The Bible said, to make your what? Your spirit your soul, and your what? Body. Three. Holy and pure and preserved for God. And to do that, to do that, you need the help of God. Because most often, you see that believers and people, they make the body beautiful. They make the body what? Beautiful. But their soul, your mind, is filled with what? Wickedness. You see then, their body, when you see them, you say, ah! But what you take inside you is very powerful. The Bible said that we as Christians, we should make our body, our spirit, our soul holy and pure. And the Bible makes us understand also that what defy a man, what makes you to be unpure, it's not what you see. It's what comes from what? Out of what? Your heart. That is why Jesus looked beyond your physical. If you look when he was looking at the Sadducees and the Pharisees, say you are what? You keep the law. But your heart is far from what? Me. So then they were feeling what? Self-righteousness, self-certification. They feel they were holy. They were made pure. But the heart, their heart was far from God. So for you to be holy, to be made pure and preserved for God, this three things must work together. If you do just one, you will not get the result. You will be doing self-glorification. Praise the Lord. And that is what most people are doing. They will feel they are holy, they dress well, They don't dress anyhow, but their heart 
is as dirty than the pig. You are holy, you want to celebrate unto God, and you are taking bad of your sister. You are barbarian. You can't forgive your neighbor. You cannot even help your neighbor when you have the miss, and you are feeling you are holy. Jesus does not judge you by the physical. He judges you by what you think, especially your soul, what you think in your heart. Praise the Lord. That is what we are going to learn today. Know that sanctification is not just something you, you dress well, beautiful, gorgeous every morning and you come to church. What you think in your heart, what that is that you have in the heart against your neighbor can be something that will make you what unholy. Can be something that will rob you of your sanctification. Praise the Lord. And that is why Jesus Christ, when he was admonishing people and said, your heart, what defy a man is not what that, it come, what that you see, but it's not what you take into what a mind, but what you give out of your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, man what? Speak it. And the way you will think and speak determine who you are. Praise the Lord. If you want to go far, if you want to say you are holy, it's not by saying by your mouth. It will proceed fruit from your word body, from your heart, and it will start from the inside and it will show forth. Praise the Lord. So, he said, we can read, it is the second work of grace after salvation. It attacks and removes the root of sin. You see? When you begin to sanctify, he attack what? The root of sin in your life. Sanctification is not one thing. It's not something that will just come once. You gave your life to Christ, yes. You know you see have those characteristics that you, you, you have in when you, before you gave your life to Christ. Sanctification is a gradual process of taking you out of your former glory, out of your former life, to the real life of God. And that it does not happen once. It happens in stages, gradually. That is why when you gave your life to Christ, you have the Spirit of God. And from that Spirit of God in you, you begin to say, no, this is one is not good. I can't do this no more. Gradually, you begin to draw closer to God. And as you hear the word of God, as you study the word of God gradually, you begin to, those things that you used to do, you, you, you used to do them easily. You have to say, no, this is not of the way. You start living there gradually. And sometimes, you will not live all. And they will not be fine, especially in your life again. That is when you are what? Being satisfied. So it's not one thing, it's not a one step, it's a process, it's a journey. And we're going to learn it on this stage. It's a stage of what? Certification. Stage of sanctification, you see. It will tell you gradual process. And we're going to learn it now. He said also, verses, um, say it is a progressive work of God in a man that makes us more and more free from the sin and like Christ in our actual living. It's a progressive work of God. So if you see a Christian that is fully sanctified, it will be different for a Christian that just gave his life to Christ. That is why the Bible, Paul was admonished the word, the Corinthians, that there are some babes in what? In what? The church. There are some people that just gave their life to Christ. They don't really know what. They feed on the meek of the world. But when you now grow up, you don't already you can't feed on those meek again because you already know those meek. You now have to feed on the bones or the hard work of God. Praise the Lord. And that is where we are going in Jesus' name. So as a Christian, let's read uh, first Corinthians. We have read that before. That is Roman. Roman 8, verse 13. Let's read that. Though of awful neglect, understanding certification is a vital for a, what, a striving Christian's life. Though it's always neglected, but knowing it is very what, important. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do modify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Praise the Lord. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live, though if you, if you live through the Spirit and do modify this body, the deeds of this body, ye shall live. The Bible told us that the deeds of this body 
our body, don't be deceived. This body is made of the world. It's made out of the clay. And because it's made out of the earth, it normally attracts the things of the earth. That is why the Bible was saying in 1 John 5, that love not the world, neither the things of the world. The love of the world, they love not the world, because this world, those things of the world, we are made out of this world. And our body is made from the, the soil of the world. So it's originally attract itself to the, to, the world, to the things of the world. So until you modify the deeds of the body, that those things that this body loves so much, you will not be able to obtain your spirit. Praise the Lord. That is what the first power that we have as Christians, once we gave our life to Christ, is the power to obtain our body. It's the power to put our body under suggestion. Praise the Lord. That is saying in what? In John 1 verse 12. That God, said, as men that believe in him, he gave them the word power. The first authority of power that you might have as a believer is a power to tear your body. Is a power to discipline your body. So we're going to learn the stages of God's certification. There are three stages of certification. Three. One is positional certification. Second one is progressive certification. And the last one is the ultimate certification. So the first one is what? Positioning. So there are, well, when you gave your life to Christ, believers through the Holy Spirit are brought out of darkness into the light. And our position, therefore, has been changed forever. From being an unbeliever, from being unsaved, to what? Believer to be what? Saved also. From sin to holiness. And from old life to a new life. 1 John 3 verse 9. Let's read 1 John 3 verse 9. So the first certification is positioning of what? Your mind. Now when you gave your life to Christ, what the first thing that happened to you? You are being transformed from your original state. You are being transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his word, light, of Jesus Christ. That is the first thing, and that is the first certification. Now, he said, you are being renewed. You have been what? Changed. Brought out of darkness into the light. And our position before God has been changed forever. So once you have give, we gave your life to Christ, that will happen. And if you did not go back to the war, that remains for whatever. Praise the Lord. So, and that certification is so powerful. It's what distinguishes you from an unbeliever. It's what distinguishes you from unsafe people. Because once you gave your life to Christ, there is a transformation in the realms of the spirit. You might not know it. You might not see it. But there is what? There is a big change. You might not see it all, but it happened. There is a transformation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of what? Light. That is the first one. Then, after that, we're going to read 1 John 3 verse 9. It says, whatsoever is born of God, do not commit sin, for his seed, for his seed remained in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of what? God. Praise the Lord. Let's read also Philippians 1, verse 9. No. Let's read also 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11. Praise the Lord. Say, you're no longer dead in trespasses. We are made alive together with Christ. Romans 6, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11 said, And such we are son of you, but ye are what? Waste. But ye are what? Sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our word, God. So, for you to be sanctified, you must be justified by the spirit of God. And for you to be justified by the spirit of God, you must give your life to Christ. So, sanctification will not come until what? You give your life to Christ. That is the word from there. You cannot say you are righteous or you are sanctified when you don't have the spirit of God, when you don't have Christ. No matter what you will do, no matter how righteous you feel you are, if you don't have Jesus, 
you are not sanctified. Praise the Lord. Romans 6, verse 11, it is, it is an initial moral change, a break from the powers and love of sin. When you give your life to Christ, so the first certificate you're going to get is a break from what? A break from the power and the love of sin. That's why I told you, once you gave your life to Christ, and there will be what? There will be a change. And the first power that you will receive is a power to tear your body. It's to what? Discipline your body. And that power make you to be what? Sanctified. Because he gave you power to break out of what? Sin and the love of sin. But I just told you that this body, because it was made out of what? The earth, he, was, he attracts what? The earth. And what are the things of the earth? The loss what? The loss of the flesh. The pride of life. So, that is why, as believers, we should know the people who manage forget neglect it, but it's very powerful. Because when you know it, the Bible said, the truth shall set us what, free. Praise the Lord. Romans 6, verse 1 says, Likewise, we reckon ye also yourself to be what? Dead indeed unto sin. The first thing that you get is this. But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Likewise, reckon ye also that you should be what dead indeed unto sin. So once you give your life to Christ, the Spirit of God will begin to sanctify you. And the first thing we will help you to do is to hate sin and to make your body dead to sin so that you cannot sin. Praise the Lord. The next step of Sanctification is the progressive sanctification. After this one, the next one is the progressive. Like what I said, when you gave your life to Christ, there are some attributes, there are some characteristics you still have that you see find yourself doing. But the progressive sanctification means as you begin to increase hearing the word of God, as you begin to study the word of God, through life, gradually, those things that you, you like to do, but you feel they are not of, of God, you begin to what? Leave them gradually. Your characteristic, your, your attribute, your, your, how will I say it now? That thing that you do before, you have them in you. You feel, for example, if you are a type that like, love to drink before, when you gave your life to Christ, some people will not be able to stop once. But gradually, as you begin to hear the word of God, and the word of God begins to purify you inside, those things that you love, that will not give glory to God, God will begin to remove them from you gradually. Most times, it's not one day thing. It's a process. It's a journey. Praise the Lord. That's the next stage of certification. Say, they call it progressive certification. This increase through life. It occurs in the process of daily spiritual renewal. You see, as we grow in grace, we are gradually but steadily changing to be like what? Christ. That is why you see this person that used to behave this way. Before, if anybody talks to you, the way you will react, as you begin to journey, as you begin to grow in Christ, you begin to say, no, I will not react this way. Somebody that step on you, you just, okay, how are you doing? Sorry. Somebody just tell you sorry, you don't receive it. But before, when they tell you sorry, hey, why will you step on me? Your reaction begins to what, change because you are what? Growing in Christ. What is happening? God is purifying, he's satisfying you gradually. And we get to a stage that this world does not move you again. That is the final one, the ultimate. That when people begin to do things to you because you are fully sanctified, those things will not be an issue to you. If you remember in life, it's covered that some things you used to do before. If they do it to you now, you will not, you will not react. You say, ah. You say, if you do this to me when I was like 10 years ago, I would have shown you. Why? Because the word of God in you have begun what, to sanctify you, begin to what, renew, begin to what, guide you. And gradually, you will not become what, like Christ. I pray that will be our portion in Jesus' name. John 17, verse 17, we can read that one. 
uh, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. John 17, verse 17, please. John 17, verse 17. Say, sanctify them through thy word, true. Thy word is what? True. Sanctify them what? True. Thy word, truth. That's why I said, as you be, begin to walk, hear the word. And as you begin to grow in grace, God will begin to sanctify you. He begin to take those things that will not give him pleasure in you. And you begin to wonder, ah, before now it was not like this. Before now, I was reacting to this. Now, I can't react. If you are the one that loves sin, as you go, he begins to sanctify you, you begin to what? Hate sin. Praise the Lord. So, that is what the word sanctification do unto us. We also have, um, we also have here, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. Then the final stage of sanctification is ultimate sanctification. This is a complete, completed a death for our soul. And when the Lord returns for our body, our sanctification will never be completed in this life because we continue to be battled with the flesh. So when we die as saints, our soul are finally free from the indwelling sin and are made perfect. And when the Lord returns to give us our resurrection body, then our sanctification will be what? Complete. So the last sanctification is our death. Because we contend with what? The body. We contend with what is in the world. But the final sanctification is when Christ will come. When our sanctification will be complete. There will not be anything to measure on it. There will not be any sin. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 3 verse 18 says, But we all... We one face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are what changed unto the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. As we all, with face, open face, beholding what as its glass, at the glory of the Lord, and are changed into what same image from glory to glory. This is the process that God was taking us through. As we are hearing the word, as we are studying the word, this is what will be happening to our life, and that will happen to our life in Jesus' name. The last one is the ultimate one, the ultimate certification, and that will be done on death. When you die, your body, because God has done the first one through you accepting Christ Jesus, and the second one by studying the word, and by hearing from the Spirit of God, and by keeping yourself to Him, then when you die, there will not be anything attached to your body. And that body will be set free, loose, when Christ will come, and He will take it. Praise the Lord. Meaning and benefit of sanctification. Sanctification represents a believer victory over the flesh. As I said, we as Christians, we believe that we what we we have a battle that is being fought with the flesh day, every day. Because we live in the war, and the war is full of sin, it's full of flesh, and our body is made of the war, and our body tends towards that, those flesh. But as we hear the war continually, it renews. Romans 7 24 to 25. And 1 John 5, verse 4. And the devil, James 4, verse 7. Believers are sanctified through the following. So how can you be was sanctified? Romans 7.24 said, O wash men, O wreck men, that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this day? O wreck men that I am. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of what sin. You will always serve God with a spirit man. But if you want to serve God with your flesh, you only do the law. You will be able to keep the law with your flesh, but you cannot keep the law of God with your flesh. You only do it by the spirit of God. And that is why the Holy Spirit is there to comfort us and to help us 
to do his way. Praise the Lord. So, how can we get certification? First of all, by God. When you give your life to Christ, and Christ is in God. When you give your life to Christ, that means you are giving your life to God also. So, through that, God can well sanctify you. First Thessalonians 5, verse 23, what we read from the memory verse. Two, by the word of God. The, tru the truth of God's word taught us, son, preach, studies, and read in one of the surest means by which the Spirit brings a bad change in our life. As you begin to study the word of God, as you begin to read the word of God, as you begin to hear the word of God, it will begin to transform you. It begin to change you. Because the word that you hear, they are not just words alone. But they are what? They are spirit and they are what? Life. And as you hear the word, they will begin to refine you. They begin to change you. So by the blood of Jesus, Hebrew 9, 13 to 14, and 1 John 1, 7. By the blood of Jesus, we can be sanctified. It's only blood of Jesus that can cleanse you from all sins. Say, for if the blood of the bull and of goats and of the arches of us and of the arches of an hesphah, sprinkle the word the unclean, certify to the word, purify of the flesh, talk less the blood of Jesus. Say, how much more shall the blood of Christ? You know, in those days, not, not just in those days, they are still doing it now. Some religious do certification, they should what key blood, key animals, key goat to clean their body to say, okay, we to atone their sin. Say, if those blood can do that in those days, talk less of the blood of Jesus that is shared who through the internal spirit offer himself to us but to go purge your conscience from what from dead work to serve the living God. So the blood of Jesus is the only blood that can cleanse. So now, even if when you commit sin and you feel you want to clean yourself, you go and kill ram. You go and kill cow. They cannot cleanse you. In those days, in times of the law, it was working for them. Because God commanded to do it. But now that Christ has come, he has paid all the price for those what blood. So once you accept him and you give him your life, this one is sure for you. So once you call on him, put yourself in place of Jesus, and you will see that the blood can cleanse all your sins. So no matter the sins that you have committed in the past, in the present, and they are so weak in your eyes, you feel so wicked, the blood of Jesus can what erase all. That's what the blood of Jesus came to do for us. So you don't need to certify ram or goat or sheep to cleanse your blood, to cleanse your sins again. The washing of your hair and the washing of your private part dog cannot cleanse you, cannot make you holy, cannot sanctify you, cannot make you pure. The only thing that can make you pure is the blood, the blood and the word of God. Praise the Lord. The fourth one is the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 1 verse 2 and 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. The Holy Spirit can purify you. When you have the Spirit of God in you, He can teach you. And when, he, when, when He's teaching you, and you begin to free from those things you used to do, your life will be purified. First Peter two, uh, First Peter one verse two said, "And let according to what the foreknowledge of God, the Father, true sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience, and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ." Not the sprinkling of the blood of ram. Not the sprinkling of the blood of boo. But the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be what? Multiply. Today, some people still do it. You know the spirit, the devil. They still like those sacrifices. The idol. Some people that worship idol. They see sacrifice blood of goat of hen to them, and they see receive it. They are just deceiving themselves because that cannot cleanse you. It's only the blood of Jesus that can cleanse. Praise the Lord. Fellowship with brethren, God brings about our change through the gift and grace of brothers and, 
and sisters in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 27, verse 17, and Hebrews 10, verse 25. As you fellowship with one another, you can be sanctified. How? How can you, as a Christian, as you fellowship with your brethren, you can be sanctified? Proverbs 27, verse 17 said, Iron sharpened what? Iron. As a man sharpened what? The containers of what? Of his friend. As you hear the word of your friend, as you hear the word of sister in Christ, the word of brother in Christ, and begin to word, exhort you, talk to you, your spirit man will be what? Sanctified. Your body will what? Sanctified. Praise the Lord. That is why you have to mind who you fellowship with. Who is your friend? So we say, show me your friend, and I will tell you who you are. Praise the Lord. Because iron sharpened iron. If you are already dwelling in among people that know God, surely you will know God. Why? Because you, the untrans from their mind will only proceed from what? The words of God. And as you hear it two, three times, four times, five times, as you hear it continually, you begin to what? Leave it. Praise the Lord. But when you live among fools or among people that don't have the word of God, people of the world, the same thing happens. As gradually as you begin to what, follow the, the utterance, if any of their words is just dwelling towards the world, soon as you will join them. Because as you hear the word, the word will dwell and you begin to live the word. Praise the Lord. I pray that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. The last one is believer willingness and readiness to submit to God. Believer willingness and readiness to submit to God can what? Sanctify you. Romans 8 verse what, 13. Believer willingness and readiness to submit to God. Sometimes when God speaks to us, God is still speaking. It's just that we are not ready. We are not willing to listen. One, we are very in hurry. Some people are busy body. When the spirit will speak to them, they don't understand. Praise the Lord. So, but if you are a believer and you are willing and you are ready to submit to God, God will sanctify you. When you start doing that thing that's not the will of God, God will tell you, don't do it. And if you don't do it, your spirit man will know. Is it not? Gradually. As you are not doing it gradually, before you know you will be what sanctified, you begin to what live it. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. Believer willingness and readiness to submit unto God. We can't do nothing. You can't satisfy yourself. But there are, activity, there are things you need to do to pay part of that certification. We talk about Brennan just now, your fellowship with God. We talk about the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you and you don't listen, when he tells you to do something, you don't listen. We listen and defy you. No. Know. Praise the Lord. So we need to listen and ready to submit to his will. Because of time, I will just give time for five minutes for questions and contributions. I know I rush it because it's much, but the major aim is that we have what certification come from what God. Then we have three types of certification. The first one, then certification also is not a one thing. It's a process. We have the word positional word certification, and then we have the progressive certification, and we have the automated certification. And we said, what are those things that can make you to be sanctified? We said the first one is God. Second one is the word of God. The third one is the blood of Jesus. And the fourth one is your fellowship with brothers and sisters. Then the fifth one is what? You were your willingness to submit unto God. We also said that the um, fellowship with brethren and sisters can also what the Holy Spirit. That is what is sixth one. So when you put the, all this together, you discover that your life cannot remain the same. And certification is not a one step; it's a gradual word process. I want to stop here so that we can have room for questions and contribution for five minutes before our time runs out. Any questions, contribution, suggestion? How can, if you don't have question, and we have question, how can we live a life of certification? It's one of the questions you need to ask yourself. How will I live? Choose your friends. Study the word of God. Submit yourself to God. So, 
and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. To lead you and guide you. And when you do this, you will be sanctified. And on the last day, when Christ shall come, the ultimate sanctification, you will receive it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Contribution, questions, or we understood it very well. If you don't understand anything concerning certification, let us know. We have teachers, pastors, elders, mom in the Lord, sister in the Lord. They are here to answer your questions. We have four minutes for that. If you don't have any questions, what does it mean to be sanctified? Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, one easiest way for we may ask, uh, how do I live a sanctified life? You understand? It's a practical thing. Living a sanctified life every day, we have to spend time with the word of God, praying, set yourself aside. Sometimes you might decide to fast. You understand? You might decide. You know, when we fast, we try to drop the flesh and make the spirit active. And like I said in our meeting on Thursday, that when you want to fast, it's not that uh, you do six to six, three days fast. You know, that's not the only fasting. Fasting is a covenant between you and God. If it's 12 noon you can do, go ahead. Pray within those hours, study within those hours, seek the face of God within those hours. If you can do it continuously, you find out that your spirit man is strengthening. You find out that some things of the flesh that you used to do before, you, they automatically you just drop them. It will get to a point one day you look back and say, oh, I used to do this thing. How did I drop it? Because God is helping you. God is helping you. God, Jesus promised us that as we continue the journey, he will not leave us. He will always be there. Praise the Lord. So don't neglect your spiritual life. The little you do, God will magnify it for you. You don't have to be perfect. To live a sanctified life. You don't have to be a pastor. Praise the Lord. Everybody can do it. So don't say, oh, because Brother Israel is speaking BB grammar on that uh, altar. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes you listen to worship song. You soak yourself in worship. Sit down in your room, driving in your car. You just fill yourself up. Don't leave any space for the flesh. So as you do this every day, you find yourself living that life. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, after salvation, the next grace of the Holy Spirit is sanctification. Sanctification takes a life time. So uh, when I come to Christ, um, the goal, the Bible says that you might be the firstborn among many brethren. It says, and the word became flesh, and we beheld the glory of that of the only begotten son. When I get born again, only my spirit man gets born again. My mind is not born again yet. My flesh, to some extent, is not fully born again yet. So that's why the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So because God has paid the price, he has given you the spirit. Now it's your job to walk with the Holy Spirit so that your life is changed. The Bible says, as we beheld him, 
we are transformed from glory to glory. In other words, we are changed to that self-image from glory to glory. As a believer, the believer that you are 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 50 years, should not be the same person that you are. You should be going through a transformation process. The people that know you and said, ah, when you were born again, that was how you used to think, Sister Beverly. The same thing you used to think. So, so the way I used to think, when I put it with the word of God, suddenly I start thinking like the word of God. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his mind, so he is. So what must change? That's why the Bible says we need to start renewing our mind. The things that our culture has taught us, the things that our background has taught us, the things that society has taught us, the things that our teachers have taught us, they are strongholds. So one of the work of the Holy Spirit is to start teaching us so that when I make a decision, that's why I must fellowship with other believers. So I'm trying to build new habits. My taste in things have to change. So sanctification is the Holy Spirit in cooperation with us. The problem is that in the church, many people are not getting sanctified. They will, I'm saved, I'm saved, that they stop at the place of salvation. It's because we are not spending time with the world. We are not spending time in fellowship. We are not spending time in prayers, and we are not practicing the word. We are not practicing the word. We are, the Bible calls us categories of hearers and not doers. So whenever I'm a hearer and not a doer, I will not allow the work of sanctification to move. It's a very important ministry of the Holy Spirit. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Because the word of God says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter. When you are born again, you can see it. A parking diomi said there was a time. He died. He died. He got to heaven. They showed him, at least it's the mansion God has built for you. My father's house, there are many mansions. A new heaven, a new earth. God is building a mansion for you. So, so that where I go. So when this old earth is destroyed, that new heaven and new earth, the new earth will come down from heaven with your own mansion, your location. So he said, Ah, oh my God. Joy, peace. Let me go. Ah, he said, You can't go in. Ah, daddy, you can see. Because you are born again, but you can't go in. There was a time he was very angry. He didn't forgive. He said, ah, that thing, you buried it. It's still there. You still stand. You corrupted. You are not fully sanctified. This is a man of God at the end of his ministry. And he was angry about the things of God. He was, um, he was dealing not forgiving. So when he woke up, that was when he woke up from me. God said, you have to go back. Because of the work you have done, we allow you to go back. Go and make correction, restitution. The man woke up. He said, ah. He was started looking for the people that uh, he, was, he, was the, he was using the flyer for another church to evangelize. And they told him he should not use it. And they now came to his church. He lambasted them. Eh? He was really angry with them. That is not the same God we are doing it for. So he never forgave them. So he said, ah, I need to go and restitute. So he looked for that ministry, apologized, and said to the soon afterwards, he died, and I'm sure it's in heaven. So sanctification takes a lifetime. We, maybe we don't preach it well enough. So God will give us that grace. We help the church to be sanctified and be more like the master in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. So we end it from here. Um, by God's greatness, too, we start on time and not rush the, uh, the topic. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word that come this morning. 
The Bible says the entrance of your word bringeth life. Lord, give us the grace, O Lord, to be sanctified in you in the name of Jesus. Lord, in any area we find ourselves not being sanctified, we ask for your love and we ask for your mercy this morning to give us the strength to be sanctified so that we will walk with you holy in the name of Jesus. And anything that normally affects our holiness, O Lord, Jehovah, we ask that this morning you will take it out of our life in Jesus' name. You will walk with it, Lord, with the blood of Jesus. And let those things be erased out of our life and our family in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Shall we be upstanding? Shall we stand up like a soldier of the Lord? Soldiers of the Lord. Say yes, sir. Soldiers of the Lord. You are not a soldier. Soldiers, you should, uh uh, let's demonstrate it. Soldiers of the Lord. Yes, sir. You raise up your leg like a soldier, you lift it up. And salute. We are saluting God this morning. Soldiers of the Lord. Yes, sir. Soldiers of the Lord. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Give somebody a high five and say, welcome to church. Welcome to church. I am happy to see you. I love this family. I love this family of God. You are beautiful. You are looking wonderful. You are beautiful and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jehovah, you are so good unto me. I want you to sing that song from the depth of your heart and tell the Lord I is so good to you. Jehovah, you are so good. Unto us, Jehovah, Jehovah, you are so good. In heaven, you are the King of kings on earth. You are the Lord of love, and in my life, you Mighty warrior, Jehovah, Jehovah. Tell him that he's so good, Jehovah. You are so good in my life, Jehovah, oh Jehovah. You are so good, Jehovah. You are so good in this church, Jehovah. You are so good in heaven, in heaven. You are the King of kings, on the on Lord of Lords. You are the. Oh, an Imala, mighty warrior, mighty warrior, Jehovah, oh, Jehovah, Jehovah, oh, wave your hand to the Lord, sing Jehovah, oh, Jehovah. Call him Jesus. Jesus. Call him Jesus. Jesus. How, I How I love. I love calling your name. Oh, call him Jesus. Oh, Lily of the Valley. Oh, every day. Every day, your name is the same. Oh, call him Jesus. Oh, call him Jesus. Oh, how 
how I love, how I love, I love you, calling your name, Jesus, Jesus. oh Lily of the Valley, Jesus. Oh, every day, every day, your name is the same. Your name is the same. Oh, how I love, how I love, I love calling your name every day. Your name is the same. Wave your hands to the Lord. Begin to appreciate Him. His name is the same. It was yesterday, today, and forever. The Lord is so faithful. He's so merciful. Begin to appreciate him in the beauty of his holiness. Begin to say, Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you because you kept washing over me. Lord, I glorified you because you never sleep nor slumber. Daddy, I thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for putting food on my table. Thank you for loving me and my family. Father, I thank you because you did not allow me to run out of scatter over my children. You did not allow me to run out of scatter over my family. You are wonderful, Lord. Call him that beautiful name. Call him the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. We worship you. I am that I am. Oh, thank you. Blessed be to your name. We worship you, Abba Father. We exalt you, King of glory. We give you praise, O oh Lord. You are worthy to be glorified, Lord. You are worthy to be exalted, Lord. Ancient of them, we worship you. I am that I am. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. We are going to go to the throne of grace. Remember that the Bible says, if we regard iniquity in our heart, the Lord will not hear us. So to this morning, you are going to pray, not because of yourself alone, but the people that are in the church. That say, Father, in any way that I've committed one sin or the other, that my sin will enter the prayer of my neighbor, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I come before you this morning, O oh Lord. I come before the throne of grace, O oh Lord. In any way that my sin is going to hinder any prayer this morning. O oh Lord, have mercy upon me, O oh Lord. Have mercy upon me, O oh Lord. Father, show me your mercy, O oh Lord. Have mercy, O oh Lord, of everything that I've done, of my word, my thought, my action, of my looking, my dressing, in any way that I've committed one sin or the other. O oh Lord, I come before you this morning. I ask for mercy. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. May the Lord forgive us our sin in Jesus' name. This morning we are going to be looking unto the Lord. And we are going to be praying as you all know that today is divine help. And the Lord will arise and will answer us. He will arise and will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The book of Psalm, Psalm 121. Verse 1 to the end. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hill. From where cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and health. He said, will not allow my foot to be moved. He, he will keep you will not be slumber. Behold, he will, keep, he will keep Israel, shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shield at the right hand. And the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. I can't hear you claiming that promises. Hallelujah. So we are going to remind the Lord. The Bible says, remind me of my word. So we are going to say, Father, this morning we are looking unto you. Arise and help us. Open your mouth and turn it to prayer. He said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. Because there is no help anywhere. There is no help somewhere. It is only from the Lord that we can get our help. Therefore, Father, concerning the issue of my life, I don't know the circumstances you are going through. I don't know the challenges that you are facing. Lay it upon the Lord and say, Father, I am here this morning. And I look unto you because my help 
come from you. Arise and help me. Arise and help me. Arise and help me. Arise and help me. Maze kapa kuri amaze de de de. Le maze de 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 de. Le makuri amazanta la maye. Oh, arise, O oh Lord, and help me, O oh Lord. Arise and help me, O oh Lord. Arise and help me, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. In Jesus' name we are praying. Psalm 102, verse 13 says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion, for the time to favor her has come. Yes, the set time is here. I don't know whether you believe in this word of God. He said the set time to help you, the set time to help me is here. You are going to declare that word to the Lord. Say, Father, Father, I am ready for divine help. I am ready for divine help. Arise and help me. Arise and help me. My blessing will not be postponed. Open your mouth and turn it to prayer. Say, Father, according to your word, you say you will arise and you will help Zion because the time to favor has come. Yes, the accepted time is here. Lord, I position myself for your divine help this morning. Arise and help me. Arise and help me. Arise and help me. In the name of Jesus, arise and help me, O oh Lord. Arise and help me, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. We are not praying that prayer very well. My time is almost over. You're going to go to somebody and you are going to hold that person and say, my father, my maker, arise and help my partner in every challenges of life that she may be going through. Father, arise and help her. Arise and help her. Arise and help her. Concerning her health, oh Lord, arise and help her. Concerning her finances, arise and help her. Oh, concerning her marriage, arise and help her. In every issue of life, arise and help her. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, arise, oh Lord. Your words say, you will arise, oh Lord, and you will have Zion. Because the time to favor has come. Yet the accepted time is here. Oh Lord, arise and help us, oh Lord. We look up to you. We are coming to our help. And we are coming from you who make heaven and hell. You say you will never allow the sun to smite us by day. You say you will not sleep or slumber over us. Therefore, Lord, we ask, O Lord, that you will arise, O Lord, and help us, O Lord. We need your help, O Lord, in the journey of life, O Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. You are going to hold another person. I assure you, without the guidance of God, in the journey of life, we will be stuck. And God will not allow us to be stuck in Jesus' name. So you are going to pray and say, my father, my maker. My father, my maker. In the journey of life, my neighbor will not be stuck. She will not be stranded. You will arise and you will help her. You will rest ever for her. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will rest up for you. The Lord will set up for you. He will strategically position Epa for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the journey of life, we shall not be stranded. We shall not be stranded. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the journey of life, we shall not be stranded. We shall not be stranded. The Lord, you will arise, O Lord. You will help us, O Lord. You will arise, O Lord. You will help us, O Lord. You will strategically place an Epa for us. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. You are still praying for that person. Make sure you are holding somebody. You are still praying for that person. That before the end of this month, as the month is rounding up, you shall sing a new song. Turn it to prayer. As this month is rounding up, you shall sing a new song. You shall sing a new song. In the name of Jesus, as this month is rounding up, you shall spread divine testimony. You shall enjoy divine help. In the mighty name of Jesus, as this month is rounding up, oh Lord, you will shall sing a new song. In the mighty name of Jesus, we shall sing a new song. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we are praying. Tell your neighbor good news. Good news. Before the end of this month, that place you are expressing good news, it will come. Turn it to prayer. Pray for your neighbor that that place, oh Lord, you are expecting good news.
that place, oh Lord, you are expecting good news. Before the end of this month, it will come. It will come. Your good news shall be delivered unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, you shall spread good news. You shall love. You shall love. You shall give testimony. Begin to appreciate the Lord. Begin to wave your hand and say, Father, we thank you. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Wave your hand and say, Father, we thank you. Because we shall express good news. Because good news shall be our portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because we shall sing a new song. We shall sing a new song. We shall sing a new song. We shall love. We shall love. We shall love. In the name of Jesus. My testimony is on the way. And it will arrive before the end of this month. I shall testify. Thank you, Jehovah. Word it to your name, O Lord. Begin to wave your hand and say, Father, we thank you. Abba, Father, we just want to praise you. Abba, Father, we want to thank you. Jehovah, hello, Jehovah, make a The I am that I am, we want to thank you. Thank you, O Lord, for the strength to pray. Father, we lay our request unto your holy hand. Before the end of this month, we shall smile. Daddy, there shall be testimony in our various homes in Jesus' name. Concerning our health, there shall be testimony. Concerning our financing, there shall be testimony. Concerning our academy, there shall be testimony. Concerning our children, there shall be testimony. There shall be open door for us. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will arise and will help us and lift us up to our destiny. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. You're going to talk somebody and say, expect my testimony. You are not telling somebody. Expect your testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we all remain standing as we go into worship and praise? Father, Lord, we want to thank you. We want to worship you. We want to honor you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord, for what you have done for us and what you continue to do for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Invisible God, you're the miracle worker. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Invisible God, you're the miracle worker. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Invisible God, you're the miracle worker. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Invisible God, you're the miracle worker. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Invisible God, you're the miracle worker. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh
changeless, almighty, almighty, you are Jehovah, glorious God, we bow before your throne, your name is Alpha. time can we worship God from our heart for this minute can we just bow down and worship God I don't know how you want to worship God this morning but I want you to just sing this song a minute as you are singing it minute that you are bowing down to the king of kings the lord of lords to worship him because only him that made you here this morning we bow down and worship Yahweh. Yeah, we bow down and worship Yahweh. Sing Yahweh. Yahweh. is too small for my God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is that the best you can do? Somebody shout hallelujah. Let the living so shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah to the Lord, a God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to the Lord, a God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to the Lord, a God the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah to the Lord. I got the Almighty reign. Hallelujah to the Lord. I got the Almighty reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. I got the Almighty reign. 
Hallelujah to the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Sing Jehovah reigns. He reigns, he reigns. Hallelujah. Amen. Jehovah reigns.
prophesizing to our head? Are we holding our hands? Are you singing? Are you praying? Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, my Lego. My Lego. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh. you call on him, I will answer him. Where you come to him, I you will run to him. Him. Where you lift your hand, we will lift our hand. Come on, praise his name, all oh, you saints of God. Let's go again. Oh. Where you call on him, he will answer us. Where you call on him, he, he will run to us. us. Hallelujah. We are not singing. We are not giving a good response. When you call on him, he will answer us. When you run to him, he will run to us. When you lift your hands, he will lift us up. Come on, praise his name. Oh, you saints of God. Everybody say, oh, sing for joy to God our strength. Oh, sing. Call on him. He will answer us. Where you run to him, he will run to us. Where you lift your hand, he will lift us up. Come and praise his name. All you saints of joy. Everybody sing, oh, sing for joy to God. I strength. Oh, sing. Oh, sing. Oh, sing for joy. Shaking body. You say when you see me dance, you dance. Is that the way a winner man dance? When you win a race, you will dance anyhow. Hallelujah. Okay, forget about the beats. Forget about anything. I want you to dance. Hallelujah. Amen. I say when you see me dance, I dance as a winner man. No. When you see me dance, I dance as a winner man. No. I'm an 
overcome in the name of the Lord. Oh, we lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. We lift your name. Lord, we lift your name. Children of the law, yes. children of the law, yes. wonderful people, yes. children of God, yes. you shout hallelujah, yes. shout yes. hallelujah to the Lord one time, say hallelujah, Praise the Lord. Let's have our seat. Let's have our seat. Let's be seated. Let's be seated. Praise the Lord. Yes. There is all the joy of the Lord in our midst. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. That is why the devil always fights to take your joy. When the devil steals your joy, the devil has conquered you. But today, as many of us that have stepped our feet in this sanctuary, our joy shall be permanent. In the mighty name of Jesus, our joy shall flow like rivers with our season. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 12 still says, With joy we shall draw water from the well of salvation. With joy we will possess our possessions. With joy we will have victory. With joy we will conquer. With joy we shall be delivered. Paul and Silas, when they were in the prison, they did not allow the enemy to steal their joy. The Bible says they sang, they praised God, and their chains were broken. Prison doors were opened. As you praise God this year, whatever the enemy has stolen from you shall be restored. In the name of Jesus. And as you rejoice in the presence of God, doors will be opened unto you. You will have multiple victories. You will have options. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Uh, I don't know how many of us are paying our tithes this morning. If you want to join me and pay my, can we come to the altar, please? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come up. Let's lift our tie to heaven. Let's appreciate God. I want you to thank him for this tithe that you are paying this morning. Remember everything he has done for you. Thank him. Thank him for provision. Thank him for open doors. Thank him for the job, for that business that this tithe came out from. Give him glory for strength, for good health to work. Thank him. Give him all the adoration. Without him, the Bible said we can do nothing. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we've given thanks. Eternal King of glory, we thank you. 
Our Lord and God, we exalt your name for great and mighty things you have done for us. Thank you for the source of this tight. Thank you for that job, for that business that you have given unto us. Thank you, O oh God, for this 10% we have brought to you. Thank you, O oh God, for the 90% remaining with us. Lord, thank you for the head you have given us. Thank you for understanding, for knowledge that we are able to do this job. Lord, we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Father, we commit ourselves unto your hands. We commit our career, our businesses unto your hands. And Father, we decree and declare that this is the least we will ever pay. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we decree and declare this morning, oh God, because we are a partner with you in this covenant, we will go forward. Amen. We will increase. We will enlarge. We will expand. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that as we grow in our career, as we grow in our businesses, Father, you will make us experts. You will make company sought for us in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we pray that our 90% will be used for your glory. Our 90% will not be a devourer. The enemy will not have hold upon it. We cover our income with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for the offering. We cover the offering with the blood of Jesus. We pray that as many that have given offering this morning, Father, they will never know poverty. They will never know financial scarcity. They will never know financial insufficiency. In the mighty name of Jesus, every of their needs shall be met to your glory, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we declare because we have given, it shall be given back unto us. Good measure, pressed and shaking together and running over. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Announcement. the Lord. Good morning, the Redeemed Christian Church of God Restoration Sing. Today's message is the lifter of my head. Our vision is to impact life and society positively and eternally for Christ. Our mission is to empower you to, to discover and develop your potential, find purpose and meaning in life, and fulfill your God-given destiny and to make heaven and prepare the church for the rapture. Every first Sunday, we have a Thanksgiving service. And every last Sunday, we have a divine help deliverance service. On Thursday, we have open heavens from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Um, on every first Friday, we have a monthly vigil and communion from 10 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. Every other Sunday will be on the bulletin board. We are looking for children to help with announcements. If you want to help, please meet us at the end of church. The church needs donations for its building fund for a new sanctuary. Please reach out to the ushers for donation and envelopes. We will be issuing tickets for a church building and want everyone to participate. This coming Saturday, this coming Saturday June 25th, we will have a one hour of deliverance. Topic, the, oh, the bomb of Gilead, Gilead. Oh, we will have a 21 days fast from June 21st to June 30th. July 21st to July 31st. 
theme for fasting is mercy and grace. Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We will pray every day at 9 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. throughout the fasting period, except on Thursdays and Sundays where we pray in church. Our divine exploits in July 2022 will be themed City on a Hill. We will have guest speakers to speak during the month. Flyers have been shared. First Sunday, City on a Hill, Pastor Olavide. Second Sunday, God's Masterpiece Pastor, God's Masterpiece, Pastor Moses Ufomba. Third Sunday, The Risen Glory, Pastor In- Akinbola. Fourth Sunday, A Towering Vision, Pastor Pierre Bassi. The ushers should coordinate with and assist the sanctuary keepers to maintain the church environment and surroundings for orderliness. NY, NY4 outing for sights and sounds on Jula- July 22nd. Transportation is free. Adult fee is $79, 13 plus. Children is $39, 3 to 12. At 3 p.m. At 3 p.m. we will leave in the morning. Next Saturday, July 2nd, we will have sports with the kids and we'll continue every other Saturday. July 15th, 30th, August 13th, 27th, and September 3rd and 10th. At the Basley Pond Park, where we had our picnic picnic last year, we will build tennis, basketball, and soccer teams. Volunteers are welcomed. Please get sports, sports gear for the kids and their health information for administrative purposes. That is all. Say if you would like to volunteer for announcements. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know whether I should call him Pastor Gabriel or what. <laughs> Please, uh, let's clap for Jesus. Yeah, so he volunteered to take the announcement. Uh, so if you are a teenager, you are a kid, you want to participate in taking the announcement or doing other services, ushering the church, please uh, let them, they would like to meet with you after the service. We have to train up our children. We have to build them up, praise the Lord, and involve them with God and make sure we utilize their capacity. So we adults do not have to do everything. Praise the Lord. Um, so we will take the congregational hymn. A choir will help us as I invite the man of God after the hymn, Love Lifted Me. Yesterday, we had the Balm of Gilead. It was a prophetic message. So uh, please listen to it. It's online. And today, mercy and grace, the man of God, God brought him all the way. Uh, another church paid for his ticket and everything to come here. So he's ready to minister, but God said he should bless us first. So we need to take advantage of it because uh, this is our season of elevation. So not only will he minister today, we also minister next Sunday. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the Bible says I have, <laughs> let's laugh for Jesus. Let's laugh for Jesus. Laugh for him. Laugh for him because he loves us very much. And, um, our fasting was originally scheduled for 20 days, but we're going to do it for the rest throughout the end month of July. So if you want to continue fasting, it's optional. So we continue fasting, but we the one for the last 10 days in July is mandatory, but the one between the 1st of July to the 20th of July is optional. You can fast, but we're going to keep praying at 9 p.m. every night. The Lord said our heart needs to be directed towards him, that our hearts are no longer with him. He said, you will, you, will, when you, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. We are not seeking him with all our hearts anymore. Our heart is divided. Our heart is distracted by the world, by the family, by our job. God said our heart need to return to him. So let us return our heart to the one who created them in the first place. So this month of July, we're going to continue praying, and God will change our heart again in Jesus' name. Every heart of stone, God will turn it to heart of flesh in the name of Jesus. Um, 
And uh, the kids, we're going to start, we're also going to be playing chess with the kids. Uh, we're going to teach some of them how to play chess. It's one of the games. The board games will be in the church on Sunday. We want to build a whole kit. You know, the, for the three hours that we have them in our possession, we want to maximize what they get from church. And we also maximize the one we get on Saturday outside the field. So we, Sister Chine here is volunteer. She has children there, right? There are three children, so you're automatically enrolled. So uh, please submit your insurance card, uh, the uh, information about your kid that we need to, Sister Chine here. Can you rise up, please? Let them know you, please. They know her already anyway, so you give it to her. And uh, uh, where is Sister Talk? Where is she here? She's not here. Okay, she has three kids that will be participating also. So if you have up to three kids, you're automatically enrolled. Praise the Lord. So the rest, you can volunteer. <laughs> you are automatically enrolled. So Pastor Blessy, does that mean you're automatically enrolled too? God bless you. All right, so let's take our hymn. Let's try it on our feet. The choir can help quickly as we invite the man of God after the hymn. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now save am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, all my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling, in his present presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, Mary is my soul's best song. Faithful love in service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could have. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could have. Love lifted me. So see danger, look above. Jesus completely safe. He will lift you by his love out of the hungry wave. He's the master of the sea, below his will be. He your savior want to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could have. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could have. Love 
love lived at me. Love lived at me. Love lived at me. When nothing else could help. Love lived at me. Love lived at me. Love lived at me. When nothing else could help. Love lived at me. Jesus' name we have worshipped. Pastor, let the Holy Spirit introduce him. It's no stranger to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the week of divine health. And I believe that everyone here today, we need health. So if you are the number one person that will receive help this week, I would like you to please rise up on your feet. I'm talking about the number one person that will receive help. I would like you to please rise on your feet and shout a louder hallelujah. hallelujah. That hallelujah is too small. It's too small compared to what God has done for us or what God has done in your life. I want you to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to me. There is somebody here this morning. The Lord says you tell you, before Wednesday, 4.25 p.m., you are going to have a new breakthrough. Can I hear you shout it louder? Amen. There is somebody here, you are celebrating your birthday. God says, I should tell you, the best day gift that you have never received before in your life and your family, he will give it to you this very birthday. The Lord also asked me to tell somebody, say, don't worry, you have been trusting him for car. Say, you are coming with that car to the church very soon. I want you to lift up your hand. God asked me to just decree everyone that are having delay in their papers. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus. If you can shout a louder amen, the embargo that is causing that delay is removed in the name of Jesus. I say it is removed in the name of Jesus. It is removed in the name of Jesus. I see somebody celebrating. This is your season of celebration. This is your season of celebration. Who is that fellow? Who is that fellow? I want you to shout another, another powerful amen. amen. You know what? God is speaking to me and I should tell a family, get ready. God gave me a message to a family. He said, get ready. Your family is about to dance to the next level. Can I hear you shout it louder? Amen. There's a brother here this morning. God asked me to tell you. He said, don't worry. I will say to you this year. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may please put your hands together for Jesus as you have your seat. God bless you. I want to appreciate God, the life of the senior pastor, Pastor Bassi, and his amiable wife, uh, together with the entire ministers of God that are here today and in absentia, the workers, and the entire congregation of Restoration Spring, LCCP, New York here. The Lord Almighty will continue to bless you all in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to come and be a blessing to every one of you. 
And I pray God will continue to make you to be relevant forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Quickly this morning, I want to speak on the topic titled Divine Help. Divine Help. And I would like, uh, please, I celebrated someone yesterday, and I would like to please join me to celebrate that fellow again. Uh, the engineer, the person that is in the engineering department, the media, please, let's, let's celebrate God in his or our life. It's a wonderful department. Hallelujah. Even though you don't see them, but you see the works of their hand. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, please, you can join the workforce. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, there's a message that God gave here yesterday during uh, the balm of Gilead that there is a parent that you've been seeing the traces in the life of that your child. But yet, you have not... Uh, Let me use the word uh, 100% convinced, but you have seen the traces. God says that child is having peer group influence and The friend had introduced that child, you know, to taking drugs. And uh, God says, you need to rise up as a parent to pray. So that that does not cause you sorrow. God says, he needs the life of that child. That he wants that child. But the child is already deviating. And God says, if you are that, the person that God is talking to, or you, maybe the parent, please, you can see me, I will join my faith with you. Because I know what it is. As a pastor, nobody has parents, you know, that prays for his or her daughter or son to go wayward. The child has not yet, you know, gone far. It's just at the introduction level. And that's what the Holy Spirit is saying. But you can quickly act now. And if you are here today, I've ministered in places whereby, you know, youth, they're coming and they are giving their life to Christ and they are saying, I used to be a drug. I used to be, uh, take drug. I used to do this. I used to do that. Sometimes, you know, the congregation, the crowd that comes out to dedicate their life among the youth, you know, different kind of things that they've introduced themselves to or they've introduced to them, and they start denouncing those things. So, if you are here today, you know that God Almighty, you want to follow him. You know his plan for your life because you carry a great prophecy, and that prophecy is what the devil is fighting. The devil doesn't fight anyone that does not carry Prophecy. It's a waste of time for the devil. Without glory, there's no battle. So if you are facing serious challenges or battles, you know that you, you carry great glory. Nobody cares to disturb a madman on the street because everyone concludes that that man is what? He doesn't have anything. Again, so please, it's the glory that you carry that the enemy is just after. Don't let them 
waste that glory. So after the service also, you want to meet with me? Please, you can see me. I'm going to pray for you, and your life is going to take a new shape in Jesus' name. Quickly, shall we open our Bible to the book of John chapter 5? I'm going to be reading from verse 5 to verse 8. John chapter 5. I'm going to be reading from verse 5 to verse 8. You can see it on the screen. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Next. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Without be made whole. Verse 7. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Verse 8, which is the last verse. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and work. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading and the Hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Divine help. What is divine help? Can be devised as supernatural assistance or help that comes from God. Supernatural assistance or help that comes from God is the kind of help that when you encounter, it redivides your destiny. You can come in contact with divine help and your life will still remain the same. Again, and that's why in that Bible passage that we read is a story of a man that we all know. Or many of us, we know. The man who lacks help. And as a result of that, he was on a spot for 38 years. Listen to me. From today, I'm going to open your spiritual eyes to see that every man on earth needs help. If your life come in contact with help, the journey of one year can turn to six months. The journey of 20 years can become one month. If you come in contact with help, I've seen somebody that I pray with to the glory of God, who came to America, within a year, he got his paper. Help! God directed him. Because the prophecy said, go. God connected him. And we have seen a situation whereby some people, they might be 15 years without paper. So, help! Fast track your destiny to get your purpose in life. So this man by the pool of Bethesda said, I have no one to help me. In other words, he said, I'm incapacitated. I don't have anyone. But the day this man met with Jesus, had an encounter with Jesus, his life experience a great turnaround that produced uncommon testimony that put an end to 38 years of stagnation, suffering, pains, and rejection. It was the help that that man got that day that put an end to pains in his life. When a man receives help, there's something that is working contrary against your life that must leave your life instantly. When a man comes in contact with help and is jobless and somebody gives him a job, 
Then, joblessness, appointment in his life, you know, is being terminated. And that's why I pray. I need 10 people to quickly rise and shout a louder amen. Before this week runs to an end, if you can rise and shout a louder amen, I decree, help that we terminate your insult. You will receive it in the name of Jesus. Can I hear you shout a louder amen? amen. You may please be seated. What happens when a man encounters divine help from above? There are some things that happen when a man encounters divine help from above. So what happened to that man? 38 years sickness turns to what? Instant healing. 38 years stagnation disappeared. 38 years useless age disappeared. Because let me tell you, age, a man can be living and his age may be useless. A man can be living in life, and his age will be what? Useless. I thought that yesterday when I came. Methuselah spent 969 years on earth. There was nothing tangible that he could show forth. His age was useless on the planet of earth. Age of a man can be useless when he or she had nothing to point at as an achievement in life. And that's one of the strategy of the enemy to render man useless on earth without fulfilling their purpose of creation. A man who suddenly turns to 60 and is celebrating that God just bless him, he now has money to save to buy a bicycle. You know that something is 60 years, old man. But let me tell you. Do you know there are people in this America that they have never saved $10,000 before? That this is, they are living, they are living, they are citizens. Don't let anyone deceive you. It's not all American citizens that will make it, it's not all Canadian citizens. That make it. It's not all Nigerian citizens that make it in their country. You know, you don't need anyone to tell you that. God is the one that determines who succeed in a place. That's why sometimes, let me give you this. When you wake up in the morning, tap your feet on the floor. On the ground, I mean. And say, America, hear the word of God. You are a product of God's creation. God created you to favor me. As I walk on you, I must be favored. I must be blessed. I must achieve my purpose of creation. You don't need to walk against me. Command the land. Anyone that the ground works against can never amount to anything on this ground. And you know, I will take you back into the Bible. Genesis chapter 4. When God caused Cain, he caused him. You know, Cain has to go back to God say, Lord, it is too much. God caused the ground. It's increased. For Cain, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 4, verse 6, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou dress well, shalt thou not be accepted, and if thou dost well, not well, sin light at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Listen now. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is thy Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. I am 
Am I my brother's keepers? And said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blows cry unto me for the ground, from the ground. And now I doubt, now this is where I'm going. He said, And now I thou cause from the earth which had opened a mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Listen to me. I'm still coming to the next one. Just hold it there. There is a statement that God made here. The ground is what? Cause. God caused the ground. Cain was caused. Here you see. Now, he said, cause from the earth which has opened a mouth. So, it tells you that even the ground that you are looking at has its own mouth. It can speak. Everything that God created has ear. And you can speak. That's why you need to know your identity. The identity you carry. God did not tell, you know, the animal that I created you in my own image. He said, you, you, I created you in my image. You are my duplicate. So you are small God. So in other words, you can recreate your future. You can, if anything is not going well in your life, just like God decreed in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, so, and, I mean verse 3, and he said, let there be light. And immediately there was transformation. So if you see anything that is not going well in your life, you can say, Lord, I recreate this. If your marriage is not working well, you carry the word to redefine it. If your career is not working well, you carry the authority to redefine it. If your business is not working well, you carry the authority, the power. That's why sometimes you say that your destiny lies in your hand. You don't need anyone to do that for you. But you must be the one to take your own responsibility for yourself. So Cain knew that it would be difficult for him to fulfill his purpose on earth. He cried, Lord, this is too much. This punishment is too much. I can't bear it. And you know our God is a merciful God. That's why when you sin against God, if you know how to go back unto him, he knows how to do what? How to forgive you. So, mercy can speak for you in order to fulfill destiny. Amen. Let me quickly tell you, when a man is operating, I mean, what happens when a man encounters divine help from above? Number one, when a man encounters divine help from above, he will experience unusual promotion. He will do what? Experience unusual promotion. Daniel chapter 3, verse 30. Daniel chapter 3, Verse what? Verse 30. The three Hebrew men were promoted after they experienced divine help in the furnace. They threw these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they put them in the furnace. Fair furnace. Fire that was burning. And suddenly, God of divine help came and he appeared. Sometimes, you may have, you may have given up that there's no hope again. But where is the place of your feet? This young man, they said something that, King, may you live. Paradventure, the almighty God that we serve, if he does not even come down to help us, to rescue us, we will not bow down for this, your image. They were carrying 100% certificate of faith. Listen to me. How many of us as pressure push to deviate 
from our feet. How many of us, what you are passing through has pushed you to negotiate what will downsize your destiny? Many of us, we went into it, we never knew that the future it will tell. But here, these three Hebrew men, God Almighty promoted them when he gave them help. Listen to me. Can I pray for somebody who is willing to rise and claim it quick that this very week, help that will lead to your promotion, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. Can I hear you shout a louder amen? Amen. That amen is too small. Please let it louder. You may please be seated. Number two, what happens when a man encounters divine help from above? Number two, he will be highly and exceptionally favored. Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. He will be highly and, you know, uh, exceptionally, you know, favored. My brother, please, can you come? Let me let me just pray with you before. You, can I? Can I, let me pray for you, please, please. You know, this year God wants to do something new in your life, okay? But do you know what God is saying? He said, "Put me first. Put me first, and I'm going to show you that way. You're going to see things changing, even if you don't, you know." Pursue them. They come on their own. But the prayer is working. But put God first. Okay? Put God what? First. When you put him first, you're going to go far in life. It's like, you know, I see you like a footballer who is going to be a star, be playing everywhere. That's what I see. You understand me? The Lord said to me, he's going to introduce you as a star. But put him what? Put in what? Don't forget this in the journey of your life. Put God first. Tell your wife that let's put God first. Everything you do, put God first. With that, you're going to remember that there's a man called Pastor Moses who said a prophecy. You're going to be great. Bless you. Hallelujah. 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 So I say number two, he will be Highly and exceptionally favored. That's Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. When God showed up as a God of divine help for Daniel in the lion's den, and Daniel was highly favored, the Bible made us to understand that Daniel became a man that was specially preferred above the constituted authority in the land. Is written in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 3. The Bible says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the president and princess because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole world, the whole realm. Listen, this is beyond human explanation. How can somebody come to United States now and it will be preferred above President Biden? Is it possible? <laughs> but you know, here, God says, with my word, it is possible. I see somebody who is standing and rejoicing now because you are carrying a garment of new favor. Garment of new favor. Garment of new favor. Can I see you rise up and shout a louder amen? Hallelujah. The Lord has me to tell somebody here. He said, he's going to give you the kind of job that no non-Nigeria has ever gotten in the history of this land. That you will be the first to be favored with that job. He's saying it that no Nigerians, no of your tribe, where you came from. I'm not talking about American citizens now. It says, 
None of where you came from, the country where you came from, that anyone has got any before now. He said, but you will be the first to get it. Say Lord, amen. Can you please do me a favor? Say, I receive it in Jesus' name. You may please be seated. You know one special thing about help from above? When help comes, the help of God comes to locate a man. It doesn't matter the long-standing years of what is called protocol. Do you know that that protocol will be broken? It's going to be broken. They will just look at you. There was a day I came, I traveled down to America, and then I was at the you know, immigration, and just, the man just looked at my passport. I was thinking that he's going to stamp it. I said, okay, you know, excuse me. He just looked at my passport. He just gave me back. I said, come on, you will not stamp. He said, just go, go, go. I, I was afraid. <laughs> because normal, normal thing is what? You stamp, excuse me. He just look at me, oh. Go. Even this one that I came, I was trying to give him everything. I said, no, 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 nobody. Go, 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 go. Favor. 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 Can somebody rise and shout favor seven times? Makata Talabaya. Ligadoba Shada Yamakaribu. Receive that favor in Jesus' name. You may please be seated. Loss of the land has no effect when favor showed up. Protocol has no effect. When favor show up, he said, look at, leave him, leave him. He's just the one. Leave him. But when there is no favor, the man's life can be frustrated. What's a man supposed to achieve for one year? Without favor, he can spend 30 years. Don't be among, of the, among the people that always say there's no favor in life. Because you will work and work, and yet you can't even achieve anything. The Bible says, lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. I know American government has done everything that virtually everyone, you know, the citizen won, but there's still a place of what? Favor. When favor is in place, it can catapult you to Washington. And you'll be in the White House. And they will look at you, where did he come from? Jamaica? Oh. You don't see that. Nigeria? You don't see from China? You don't look at that. All what they just want is you. And you say, it's me. It's me. Say, it's me. it's me. Say, I received that favor. Received that favor. You will get it in Jesus' name. Amen. When favor is at work, your background cannot put your back on the ground. I said it again. When favor is at work, your background cannot put your back on the ground. Favor is a garment that no one rejects in life. You must embrace because everyone needs favor in life. Favor can bring a man out of the prison and put him in a position of authority and everybody we overlook all is wrong in the past. Favor is so powerful to understand that it will change your identity. Favor is so powerful to understand that it can change your location. Do you know that within 48 hours Somebody can just be remembered and then you are getting the best job. The best job. Who is that fellow? Oh, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. 
Where's again? Oh, receive it. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want you to please rise up and say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Wonderful. You may please be seated. Number three. I'm talking about what happens when a man encounters divine help from God. From above. Number three. He will experience destiny's supernatural switch that cannot be divined by man. Recently, last year, God gave me, you know, a kind of testimony that till today, I don't know how to explain it. Till today, I don't know how to explain it. God made me the owner of the testimony to be speechless. How many people know that there's a testimony that can make you yourself to be speechless? The only thing you will know how to do is to open your mouth and say, ah, you don't know how to explain. Because even when you're explaining to people, they will not understand. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if they understand, they will doubt. God, do this. Can I pray for somebody here? You want that kind of testimony? Please rise up on your feet. God asked me to just tap your hand. Just do like this if you want it. Receive it in Jesus' name. 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 Listen, before July 22nd, if you believe there's somebody here, God is not a talkative, and he would never say what he would not do. Listen, before that date, July 20 what? Second, there is somebody here. The desire that you have been praying for. The Lord said you will share the testimony before that day. Can I hear you shout a louder? Amen. amen. Can I hear you shout a louder? Amen. amen. Please be seated. When the God of divine help showed up for Joseph, his destiny experienced supernatural switch that is beyond human explanation. Genesis 41, from verse 41 to verse 44. Genesis 41, from verse 41 to verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Now, please, can you go back to that 41? I want you to please rise up on your feet and put your name wherever you see Joseph, okay? And put America or wherever you want to go to where you see Egypt. Amen? Amen. And we're going to read together on the screen. One to go. And Pharaoh said unto Moses, See, I have said thee over all the land of America. Can you read it again? And Pharaoh said unto Moses, Elijah Moses, See, I have said thee over all the land of Egypt. I mean, America. Because I don't, I don't want to go to Egypt. <laughs> oh, is there anyone who want to go to Egypt here? Oh, America is sweet, man. <laughs> Amen. 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 For you to know that God has done it, wave your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Go to the next verse, please. 
There's somebody here now. God is telling me, you know, he said, oh, Moses, so like you, Moses, so like he said that you are going places. You will rule the world. Say it to yourself. Say, I'm going places. I will rule the world. <laughs> Amen. Hear what happened again. In the next verse, verse 42. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in virtue of fine lining and put a gold chain about his neck. I don't know where you are working now. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't want to know for now. But all what I know is that you'll be celebrated. Amen. You'll be celebrated. Amen. You'll be celebrated. Amen. In any way you are working, even if you are trusting God for work, God will connect you and you'll be celebrated. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Go to verse 43. Verse 43. Verse 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of. Can I pray this prayer for you? I used to say something. If you are in your family, and anytime they want to have a meeting, they don't contact you, then something is missing in your life that they don't need. They don't need you. Biden is the president. Family, can they conclude? anything without him because it's what important when they no longer call you for anything when they no longer call you, as I'm in America here they called me in my own family that they wanted to do something oh they gave me information I'm in America here now when I get here I will. why because they see that you are relevant there are people that the enemy has rendered useless in their family. They forget about them completely. They don't even call them for anything. Amen? Do you know that the devil is so funny in such a way that even among immediate family, father, mother, and children, that mother, when he wants to get something, maybe he has like three or four children. Is only one that will be calling. Because his or her mind have centered that that one is the blessed child. Can I pray now? If you can shout it louder, amen. Lift up your hand. In your family, in the church of God, in the nature, in the city, I decree in the name of Jesus. Your name is blessed in the name of Jesus. I say your name is blessed in the name of Jesus. Every curses that may be working against you, every power from the pit of hell that may be working against you today, I destroy that power in the name of Jesus. Can I hear you shout a louder, amen? God asked me to pray for you today. He's liberating you. He's liberating you. He's liberating you. He's now. Receive it now. I see the power of God coming upon you, liberating you, liberating you, liberating you, liberating you. Receive it now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Ah, thank you, Father. 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 The Lord says, I should tell you, brother, it's going to give you one connection this year that will solve a major problem in your life. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are clapping for Jesus, you can do better. You need divine help. You can be stagnated in life. Enough is enough. A man, listen to me, Mephibosheth was nobody. But when help to King David came to him within 24 hours, the man began to dine with the king. 
he began to die with what? Authority. Authority. Help brought him from nowhere and he placed him in the position of what? Authority. There is somebody here. This morning, I decree, if you can shout it loud, I am a authority is moving you higher. Favor is moving you higher. Favor is moving you higher. Because you believe, receive it also. Receive it also. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. I don't know the numbers of years that you have been struggling. But with one help, with one help, struggle may come to an end. With one help, appointment of delay can be terminated. With one help, with one help, the story of your life can be changed. Joseph, as at yesterday, was a prisoner. The 24 hours, he became a what? A prime minister. God is changing your garments. God is giving you a new garment. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to pray, say, Father, I need help. Send help to me this week. In the name of Jesus, send help to me this week. In the name of Jesus, send help. Send help. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Listen to me. The gateway to receive help is the salvation of your soul. Because that, when you are talking about divine help, it's not from man. Salvation of your soul. I don't know. You are here today. You want to surrender your life to Jesus? This is the best time. This is the what? The best time you can do that. It doesn't matter the number of years that you have lived in a sin. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter the sin you committed. Even pastor was not there this morning. But God says, I am here to deliver you. First John 1 9. First John chapter 1 verse 9. He is too holy. He is too just. He will cleanse you from all what? Unrighteousness. Provided you confess your sin unto him. You want to surrender your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Maybe what you have done in the past is what the devil is using to take advantage on you. I don't want to know what you have done but you want to surrender your life to Jesus. All I know is Jesus can save you. I want you to please raise up your hand. I want to pray for you. God bless that hand. God bless that hand. I want to pray. Just stretch it forth. Let me pray for you straight. Stretch it well. I decree in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God. New name. Give unto your son in Jesus' name. I pray in the name of Jesus. New blessing. Let it begin today in the name of Jesus. I pray your name will be written in the book of life. And you are blessed permanently. We shall all make heaven in the last day. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus, mighty name, we we'll pray. Listen to me. This is the final one. I want to mention that two things that you need to do. You want to receive divine help. I told you salvation of your soul. That's the gateway. Number two, you must be a giver. You must give your tithe. If you want the heaven to be open for you, you must learn how to trigger the heaven to be open. Don't let the economy of America teaches you not to give to God. Don't let what you are passing through to suggest to you that after all, I've been given tithe in the past, what have I achieved? Don't swallow what belongs to God. Bible says when you, Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, he said, he said, prove me, prove me with this if I will not do what? He said, bring all tithe, Abby, into the storehouse, which is here. He said, that may be meat in my house. He said, prove me now. He's not even say tomorrow. He said, prove me now. And now is when? Now, now. He said, 
Here we see the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. God is giving you the license that we tear the heaven apart for you to receive divine help and that is what? Pay your tithe. Amen. Listen, your pastor didn't send me this but the Holy Spirit just ministered to me. Please, always appreciate your pastor. Please, in this church, when I come, let me see that Holy Spirit has ministered to me. Appreciate what? Your pastor. Listen to me. Your pastor didn't send me this hope. And if I'm ministering in the flesh, let the Holy Spirit be the one to discipline me. Okay? But I'm speaking in the spirit. Take care of your... Please, celebrate him. Celebrate him. If he has not marked his birthday this year, please, gather yourself. Sir, gather yourself and see. You can take the lead by championing people, sir. God says, I should tell you here in this church, even if he has marked his birthday, listen to me. Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. I see a lot of you. God wants to skyrocket you, promote you, bless you. But God says, I should tell you, if I say this and the Lord does not tell me, let God be the one to do what? To discipline me. But God says, I should tell you, the church, hear. Hear the voice of God. Do something one day that will make your pastor to be happy. If you do it, and you don't see it in the church, please don't invite me here again. Warn to him that said, not hear the Lord. When the Lord has not spoken, this will fast track. I see everybody here. License of testimony is being given to you from above. Obedience is what? Better than sacrifice. You don't need to let pastor know before you had the meeting. You don't even need his wife to know before you have the meeting. But if you want to arrange with the wife, you can arrange. No problem. But I am telling you, do something urgently. No matter, just do it as a surprise to him. Pastor will love you. That's all. And let him now, on that day that you do it, force him to do something. Let him stand like this. All of you, please don't forget, go on your knee irrespective of the suit or gown that you are wearing. Go on your knee. Let him be the only one standing on that day. And let him stretch forth his hand towards all of you. And pronounce fatherly blessing. If I be a man of God, then you know that here. The kind of testimony that you have never recorded before. In this assembly, you will see fast tracking coming forth, coming forth, coming forth. That is what the Lord say you should do in this church. That will be the gateway to your next level. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. By the way, he is going to be the one to kick off our divine exploit program starting next Sunday. This is divine help, you know, so when he comes from Nigeria like that, he comes with a lot of anointing. I told you, other people paid for his ticket for the way from Nigeria. He ministered to large crowds. So, you know, you have testimonies. So I said, he's passing through New York. I said, uh, God wanted to bless us. That's why God brought him here. And yesterday, the topic that the Holy Spirit, I say, the Holy Spirit said, I, you just going to use him on Sunday. Use him on Saturday. The topic that God gave us for yesterday is the same topic those people that invited him gave him. So uh, I just want you to know that it's, the, it's your season for upliftment. God has been saying it. It's your season for elevation. God has been saying it. And you will receive it in Jesus' name. So God has been consistent. God has been consistent. And I pray for somebody, you will be elevated in Jesus' name. Every plan of the enemy to frustrate your destiny, we bring it to an end in Jesus' name. Let's stretch out our hands towards the man of God. Let's pray that the balm of Gilead will restore every virtue that have gone out of him. It will lift him up in the name of Jesus. 
the, his anointing will be filled. Even where he's going to minister, the Lord will still have multiplied the anointing for those folks. They've brought him here. They will also be blessed in Jesus' name. As he has ministered here, the Lord will fulfill every one of his destiny in the name of Jesus. His destiny here pass will release to him in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. Um, before we invite uh, Sister Karen to doing birthday, we'll wrap up shortly. First time, uh, today's your first time of coming. I want you to step out. Uh, it's your first time of coming here. You came at the right time. It's your first time. Come out, just step out. Step out, step out, step out. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. We can see all over you the glory of the Lord. You are welcome in the name. You can check your hand. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you with the love. That brother that is going over. Okay. Yes, we love you. The of the Lord, we can see all over you the glory of the Lord. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. We can see all over you the glory of the Lord. Yes, we love you in the Lord. Yes, as you have come, the Holy Spirit will minister to you in Jesus' name. Pastor, Lord said, can you lay hand on them? Yes, this is your season. Yes, the season that will change your destiny in the name of Jesus. Help you just anoint them because you are here, lay hand and anoint them. As they have come for the first time, there is a first time anointing. Anyone that comes to Jesus the first time receives something special. And uh, the Lord said, I should tell you, you should mark this day. You will come to testify for this day in Jesus' name. Your life will never remain the same again in Jesus' name. In everywhere the enemy has been frustrating you, the Lord proclaimed deliverance to you today in Jesus' name. Our ushers will give you the booklet to write your name and number. And uh, so we will pray with you. You know, God bless you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sister Karen. We're going to do a very quick dance, Thanksgiving forward for Sister Karen and her family. She's celebrating her birthday. Yes, it's a season of upliftment. She's going to be supporting us in the Caribbean, Caribbean church. Yes. Brother Lloyd, do I get your permission? Do I get, your, I get my permission, right? Yes. She's going to be my assistant pastor for the Caribbean. Goodbye. Whoa. I stand along with you. Goodbye, pleasure of sin. I stand no longer with you. I raise up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my mind. Goodbye, whoa. Goodbye, whoa. I stand no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasure of sin. I stand no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest. Let the family dance with her. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. 
Jesus, I'm gonna see my Jesus someday. I've got my heart made up, and I won't turn back. Cause I'm gonna see my Jesus someday. Goodbye, whoa, goodbye, whoa. I stand no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sins. I stand no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Bum, 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 again. Thank God I'm born again. Bum, 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 again. Thank God I'm born again. Bum, 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 again. Thank God I'm born again. Bum, 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 again. Thank God I'm born again. Born of the water, I speak the love. Thank God I'm born again. Born of the water, Spirit. Born of the water, thank God I'm born again. Everybody have you know. Everybody have you know. Who Jesus is. Everybody have you know. Everybody have you know. Everybody have to know. Who Jesus is. Who Jesus is now. He is the lily of the valley. Bright the morning star, in the fairest of the fire. So everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Who oh, Jesus is, who oh, Jesus is now. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright morning star. He is the fairest of the valley. Everybody has to know. the victory many people doubt it I can't live without it that is why I love him so he's a victory here we go the Lord 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 Many people doubt it. I can't live without it. That is why I love you so. It's a victory. Everybody have to know. Everybody have to know. Everybody have to know. Who Jesus is. Jesus is. Everybody have to know. Everybody have to know. Everybody have to know. Who Jesus is. He's a lily of the valley. He's the bright morning star. He's the fairest of the stars. Everybody ought to know. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. In the name of the Lord. Hey, let's go, beat. Let's go. I, I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. I am a conqueror. In the name of the Lord. I am a warrior. I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. Stop! 
no, 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 Shout hallelujah. Pastor. Pastor. Oh yeah, come on, be blessed. Then. Yes, sir. Amen. The celebration has already started. The celebration has what? Already started. I decree upon the family that is celebrating today. This is just the beginning of your joy. This is just the beginning of your testimony. God will tell to you with everlasting joy. You will have joy in your marriage. You will have joy in your family. You will have joy in your career. In every area of your life, you will have joy. Your children will give you joy. Your grandchildren will give you joy. In the mighty name of Jesus, your generation will be known for a generation of joy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even generations to come, they will inherit that joy in the name of Jesus. There's a prayer that you have been praying that you want God to do your family. God said he has answered. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So we are starting in August. A new beginning for you in Jesus' name. Brother Lloyd. Or should I say Pastor Lloyd? Are you going to support her? You're going to be there. Are you going to be there, Brother Lloyd? I'm putting you on the spot. You're going to be there. Amen. Amen. So, this is your beginning has started already in Jesus' name. Yes, you will weep no more in the name of Jesus. Every door that the enemy has shut by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree them open in Jesus' name. You will have no want in the name of Jesus. Your children and your generation will be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Okay, let's just dance back, huh? Okay, Pastor, bless him. Yes, please. Please, let's go on our knees. Let's go on our knees. Praise the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, our God, we thank you for such a day like this. Father, we thank you for bringing us to be alive this day. Father, we thank you for your daughter, Sister Karen, that you have kept all these years. Father, we thank you for your hands that has covered her. We thank you for your hands that has upholded her. We thank you for the skillfulness of your hands that has guided her, that has directed her, that you? has kept her till this day. Lord, we give you all the glory. We thank you because we are celebrating life, not death. We thank you because we are celebrating her, healthy, not in the hospital, not in the nursing home. We thank you, oh God, this day for our household that you have kept, that they've come to rejoice with her. Lord, we give you all the glory. Eternal King of glory, we commit her into your hands going forward. You said you are the God that has gone ahead of us. You said you will guide us, you will lead us, you will direct us. Father, we pray that you will guide her all the days of our lives. Father, we pray that you will keep her all the days of our lives. Father, we pray today that sickness that comes in old age will not see her. As she advances in age, so will her strength be. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we declare your word upon her this day. 
You said the sickness you put upon the Egyptian, you will not put it upon us. Every Egyptian sickness, Lord, we ban them from coming to her. In the mighty name of Jesus. As she go in this journey, she will go with good heads. She will celebrate her grandchildren in good heads. She will not celebrate them from the sick bed. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God, you say with strength we shall draw waters from the well of salvation. In the well of salvation there is abundance. In the well of salvation there is peace. In the well of salvation there is long life. In the well of salvation there is prosperity. Lord, we pray. Every blessing that is embedded in the well of salvation, Lord, with decree shall be a portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Joy will not be taken from her. All the days of her life. As Pastor Moses has said, our children to come, generation to come, they will celebrate joy in her life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for our entire household. Because you have brought her, you have brought her entire household this day. Except a daughter that is not here. Lord, we pray, wherever she is, let the grace of this moment locate her. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because of her, our entire household shall be protected. Because of her, our entire household will not experience evil. They will not experience sorrow. All the days of their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in Exodus that anywhere they see the mark of the blood of Jesus, the angel of destruction shall pass over. Amen. The angel of death shall pass over. Amen. Sister Karen Brack, let me I decree to you. Every agent of destruction, every agent of sickness, every angel of sorrow, Whatsoever it may be, that will not give God glory, they will pass over you. They will pass over your household in the name of Jesus. And above all, you will find joy in coming to the presence of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our sister. The Bible says, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our heart unto wisdom, O Lord. Thank you for our life since our birth up to this moment. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, your protection, your preservation upon our life, upon our husband, upon our entire family. Daddy will return glory unto you in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, she has decided to celebrate in the house of God before you, Lord. Daddy, I pray that you release your blessing upon her life in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your family is blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your children, your grandchildren, they are blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will celebrate many more years in the land of the living in good health in the name of Jesus. You will not die before your time in the name of Jesus. You will fulfill the numbers of your days in the name of Jesus. The glory of God will radiate around you and your entire family in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It's already well with you in Jesus' name. You know, and uh, I bless you from the place of a father. You will call one thousands, we answer in Jesus' name. Amen. The heavens we open to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You will be blessed above measure in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will send his protection around you in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not lack in Jesus' name. Amen. You will find favor at every corner of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of God will overwhelm you. Yes, as your kids, your children have walked into the church, they will not walk out again from his presence in Jesus' name. His eyes shall always be upon them. 
God bless you. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye and bye, Lord, when the morning. Come, you can dance to your seat. When the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome and we understand it better by and by. By and by, Lord, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, Lord, when the morning comes, all the saints of God I gathered on. We will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand the better by and by. Let us share the grace in fellowship. I know I apologize. Our time is fast spent. Uh, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's rise on our feet. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will cause his face to shine upon you. You will be a blessing when you go out. You will be a blessing when you come in. You will be a blessing to your, to your generation. You will be a blessing to society. Go in peace. Be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Lord, thank you, Lord. All, All we have, have to say, thank you, Lord. Then what can I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall I say unto the Lord? All we have to say is the birthday continues. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you, Lord. Joy overflows in our heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows in our heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. I will praise Him. I will praise Your name. I will worship You. Glory, Hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. Glory, Hallelujah. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. I will praise Him. I, I will, will praise Him. I will worship You. I will worship You. Glory, 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 glory Hallelujah. Sing, Sing a new song to the Lord. Lord. Glory, hallelujah, sing a new song to the... Waiting, I'm going to give to you my praise, my praise. I've got joy, 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 joy overflow.